Hi, I'm Allison Meyer. I'm a current freshman at Virginia Tech studying biochemistry. Our first year experience biochemistry class was assigned to read a scientific article by Gonzalo de Gonzalo called Turning a Riboflavin Binding Protein into a Self-Sufficient Monooxygenase by Cofactor Design. This article outlines a study showing how cofactor redesign can be a viable approach to creating artificial flavoenzymes with unprecedented activities. Anabolic reactions such as lipid and nucleic acid synthesis rely on reducing agents such as the very expensive NADPH. Synthetic flavoproteins were tested to look at their ability to perform peroxide-driven and antioselective sulfoxidations. The reason for the study was to find a way to bypass the use of NADPH because it is so expensive. Flavoprotein monooxygenase was needed that could operate independently from NADPH. To do so, the flavin cofactor needed to be redesigned. In this diagram, the solid arrows represent the mechanism operating naturally within flavoprotein monooxygenases. The dashed arrows down the middle of the diagram represents a shunt pathway or an alternative route that the R1 groups could take through the use of alkylated flavins. Because NADPH is so expensive to use, different flavins were tested to determine which ones were the most efficient at bypassing the NADPH reduction step and going straight to the shunt pathway using alkylated flavins. In Table 1, we can see where different R1 groups were tested and the results of how efficient each one was at bypassing the NADPH reduction step. Entry 14, BZ, proved to be the most efficient with a value of 60%. Entry 16, BU, was a close second with 53% efficiency. Now, companies and organizations that specialize in the production of products using NADPH now have a less costly approach to produce the same desired products.